What's up, chess fans? In case you missed it, yesterday, May 26, was a really weird day in the world of chess. Our beloved world champion, Magnus Carlsen, created a chess.com account named Menu Garden with the goal of becoming number one blitz in the rankings and then deleting his account and retiring from playing on the site. While he was ultimately unsuccessful in this goal, uh, he did provide us with very entertaining games over the course of six to eight hours, and he even live-streamed all of them, along with his patented dry humor. The game that we chose for you today was one where he had the black pieces against very talented Grandmaster Louis Supi, who's 23 years old and a rising superstar. He's currently, uh, I believe, number four in the rankings in Brazil, but I believe in the next few years, he will break 2,600 and potentially approach 2,700. Let's see what happened when the two of them clashed. Luis Supi started the game with e4, and Magnus busted out the Scandinavian defense, which he has played in Blitz quite a bit. After e d5, queen d5, the less popular knight f3, not taking advantage of the queen's placement immediately was played. Uh, I actually play knight f3 uh, myself in my, in my uh, e4 repertoire. And after bishop g4, bishop e2, knight c6, black is taking an approach of just very quick piece development. He's not putting any pawns in the center of the board. Uh, he wants to castle quickly and fight against white, potentially expanding with d4. But here we see Louis throw in knight c3, put the queen back, and challenge uh, the light squared bishop on g4. Magnus opts to trade right away and then castle, um, and white castles as well. And... Magnus here has a lot of natural looking moves, e6, e5, maybe g6, maybe knight f6, moves that you know, to the untrained eye uh, look like they all kind of do the same, they're just trying to develop. But what Magnus notices is that this bishop is extremely powerful, and so he decides to play knight d4, trading it off immediately. Now here Luis with the white pieces also can play a lot of natural looking moves, but he plays one uh, that looks to directly take advantage uh, and challenge Black's setup. Kings are castled on the opposite sides of the board. That should be a little bit of a hint for all of you that uh, attacking one another is going to be far easier than normal. And so Luis plays a4. And the move a4 is, you know, one is just to throw the pawn forward, but another idea of this move is to potentially play knight b5, uh, targeting both pawns and offering a trade of knights, which would open the position for the rook. Uh, the other idea is that if this knight were to take the bishop, which it did after the following moves, king b8, knight b5, we just see this idea, knight takes f3, queen takes f3, you have a situation on the queen side where it's just a bunch of pawns, a queen, and a king. And when you don't have knights or bishops guarding your king, uh, it can be a little bit easier for the attacking side to break in, either using their pawns or their pieces, since the king really should not be the line of defense uh, guarding the entrance into... Uh, his castle. Now, I should just say that knight b5 here, taking is way too dangerous uh, because, again, your queen should also not be the defensive uh, resource uh, for your king's safety. And here there's a really nice move by white, rook a3, uh, trying to go rook b3 and target the b7 pawn. And while black can play still moves like c6, trying to block the light scored bishop, it is far too dangerous uh, with moves like d3 and bishop b3 coming. Every single piece in white's position is about to be lined up to the king. This is not recommended. So instead, Magnus plays queen f3 and says, Luis, please get your knight out of here. It's scaring me. And Luis says, I'm not going to be getting my knight out of there. I'm going to play c4. Now, c4 is, a, is, is what I like to call a gangster move. I mean, it's, it's, it's flamboyant. It's beautiful chess. He's saying, listen, take my knight. Um... When you take my knight, what's going to happen is I'm going to open up a direct line of attack toward your king. And this, th this looks extremely dangerous for black, uh, especially because queen a3 and queen here is just devastating. And, you know, if you play a move like e6 to stop the queen from coming to a3, I'm going to play queen b3, queen a4. I'm still going to find a way to get to that side of the board and defeat you. And I think both players here may have overlooked, I mean, dare I say overlooked, the defensive resource queen d3. And actually taking the knight and then playing queen d3 puts a bit of a stoppage in white's plans. Uh, the only way now to get the queen to the other side of the board would be to play something like queen d1. Um, and then here, maybe there is an opportunity for you to take this pawn uh, and stop queen a4. Uh, if you play e6, queen a4 is still coming and maybe you can try to evacuate the king. But obviously this looks uh, quite dangerous. Although black with some good play... 
uh, can hold the fort. Magnus chose to not take this risk, but sometimes in chess you have to, uh, and Magnus played e5. e5 is a very natural move, activating the bishop. Uh, and here, Luis uh, played another very, very good move. He brings more pieces to the party, but he doesn't do it in a slow way. He plays d4. At first glance, that move looks like it just loses a pawn, and actually, that's exactly what Magnus played. But the point of this move is to disallow either of these pieces from getting into the game. He's forcing his opponent to react to the pawn danger. If you don't react, you play something like knight e7, I'm just going to take, and I'm just going to win a pawn. Even though your knight gets here and defends your king, I will be up a pawn. So a very difficult decision uh, for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, he plays this move, d4, and Magnus decides to take, but when this pawn comes here, now we see the whole point. Bishop f4 now. Another piece joins the attack, and the c7 pawn is under pressure. Magnus can play something like bishop d6, but after it takes, takes c5, taking advantage of this pin, black's position is falling apart very, very quickly. And so now Magnus thinks that he can take the knight, and um, at first glance, it, it really does look that way. Uh, he recaptures and plays bishop d6. A good strategy when you're under attack is to trade off some of the attacking pieces. And that's exactly what Magnus is doing here. But here Luis comes up with an absolutely brilliant and astonishing idea. Uh, for Two of them, actually. The first of which is just to play the very calm rook a2. So now if Magnus continues with the plan of getting this bishop off the board, uh, we don't even take. We go rook here. We threaten mate. Uh, and the position is, it, it's it's lost. I mean, it, it, it's completely lost for Black. Uh, he has to defend in some really crazy way by, like, giving away the bishop and then somehow giving a check and trying to evacuate. But he's going to lose a lot of material in the process. So after rook a2, Magnus decides to play queen f5. And queen f5 looks like, you know, you're, you're threatening queen f4, which will get the queens off the board, and you have this escape for the king. So it looks like things are under control. Now rook a1, threatening checkmate. Right? Threatens mate. Magnus shows the secondary idea of evacuating with the queen, plays king c8. And now, if you pause the video here and think, how is white going to win this position? You're going to struggle. And I highly recommend that you do it. Try to find how white is going to win this game. It's very difficult to be forcing here. I mean, rook a8, the king's just getting away. Uh, there are some crazy variations. You can play queen takes pawn. But here, Luis shocked everybody, including Magnus Carlsen, by playing the astonishing move Queen C6. A move that, at a low depth, the engine doesn't even see. It needs to be at, like, depth 20, 19 to see something like this. Um, queen C6. I mean, the, the point of this move is very straightforward, actually. It's just to stop King D7. And if takes takes, it's just to stop King D7. And somehow, despite having... Five extremely powerful pieces on the board, there is no way to prevent rook a8. No way. You can give a check, you can block for a moment, but this is coming, and there is nothing that can be done. Uh, when queen c6 happened on the board, Magnus's demeanor uh, went from super relaxed to... Wow. That, and I'm, I'm pretty sure he was even quoted as saying... Things like, uh, that's, a, you know, that, that's dirty and, uh, but, but he was, I mean, he was super, super, super complimentary of his opponent. Um, and it was, you know, it was just kind of nice to see. Like, sometimes you know that you just missed a move, uh, and there's no, you know, there's no anger or ill will associated. Just, you just kind of raise your hand and go, wow, that is an astonishing move. Queen C6. The purpose of which, uh, can be really boiled down to the fact that it's a checkmate net. The checkmate net is when you surround the enemy king prior to delivering a check by taking away its escape squares. This one is just more flashy uh, than others. And it turns out that taking the pawn on d4 was the fatal error. Magnus did have to play knight e7, giving away this pawn, and bringing the knight to the defense of not only a7, but just this side of the board in general. But a brilliant game. And hats off to Magnus for, for being a good sport, uh, and we expect to see much more of Louis Supi in the future. Hopefully you enjoyed this recap, a very, very interesting, uh, brilliant game, brilliant attacking game, a little miniature there from the white side. Uh, somewhere on the screen, there should be other videos. Like the video if you enjoyed, drop a comment below, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you on the next Game of the Day recap here for Chess.com.